Hello and welcome to St. Mary's Now, a partnership between the Enterprise Newspaper and the Forest Center TV Video Production Program. I'm Louis Bose. And I'm Eric Van Brunt. And here's the latest news from the Enterprise. Local school boards once again have the power to choose when students return back to school. Southern Maryland school officials are satisfied to once again have control over school calendars, but are not sure if that means returning to, the, to a pre-Labor Day start date. Karen Bailey, chair of the school board in St. Mary's County, said a survey was recently sent to the community. They like to start after Labor Day, Bailey said. The chair said she doesn't see the board making changes to the 2019-2020 school calendar, but they might try to make the day before Thanksgiving a day off once again. The Maryland General Assembly on Thursday quickly overrode Governor Larry Hogan's veto of a bill that will raise the state's minimum wage to $15 an hour. The bill incrementally increases the state's current 10-10 minimum wage over the next five years for businesses with 15 or more employees. Businesses with fewer than 15 employees will have until 2026 to pay the $15 an hour. Companies will now be required to provide an explanation of wages to tipped workers and can also pay workers younger than 18 years old 85% of the minimum wage. People have this conception that there are they are just kids working minimum wage jobs, but that's not the truth, Delegate Brian Crosby said. Increases begin at $11 an hour on January 1, 2020 and will continue to rise over the first of each year until 2025. Small businesses will also begin paying $11 an hour on January 1st next year and will have to pay $15 an hour by July 1st, 2026. Delegate Brian Crosby stated that the law targets larger retailers like a Walmart or an Amazon. Delegate Jerry Clark has also made a comment on this subject and has stated, I truly do not believe the government has a place in negotiating salaries and benefits between employers and employees when they have absolutely no idea what the profit structure is or the ability of that business to be able to increase its profit structure. With prom season right around the corner, high schoolers have been searching for the perfect outfit. One of the places to look was the Lexington Park Library. The Cinderella Society hosted a pre-prom prep event on March 21st, where prom goers could browse for dresses, shoes, and accessories, try them on, get them altered, and take them items home all for free. Hattie Dalton, who's also a senior at Chopticon, was browsing through some of the gowns on the rack. Dalton said, I saw the event on Facebook and I wanted to check it out. She feels getting a free dress from the library would help be helpful to her parents, who have five other children, and prom dresses are usually quite expensive. Dalton later tried on a velvet blue gown. The donations came in a variety of dress sizes. The clothing racks were filled with gowns in sizes as small as zero and as large as 18. The libraries not only had dresses and accessories, but they also had a small selection of button-down shirts and suit jackets in the back for the gentlemen. All three St. Mary's Public High School's proms are at the Hollywood Firehouse Social Hall this spring. Leonardtown High School is this Saturday, April 6th. Great Mills High School is April 27th, and Chopticon's prom is May 17th. Just in time for the spring growing season, a series of plant clinics start up this week for residents to get tips and advice on a host of gardening topics. Mary Ancinelli, the local master gardener coordinator, said that the clinics give residents a chance to interact with the educators and have gardening problems diagnosed. Master gardeners are trained volunteer horticultural educators who support the mission of the University of Maryland Extension by educating residents about safe, effective, and sustainable horticultural, pra horticultural practices and build healthy gardens landscapes and communities. All three county libraries will host classes starting this month and continuing through October. The University of Maryland Extension Ask a Master Gardener plant clinics will be held over the next seven months at all three St. Mary's County Library branches. Also at some local farmers. Fishing season is just around the corner and it's t time to get or renew your fishing license. The Department of Natural Resources Southern Region Service Station has been moved from its prior location near the Benedict Bridge to inside the Department of Motor Vehicles in Waldorf for the foreseeable future. New this year, a physical copy of the license is no longer mandatory if you have an electronic copy on your phone. 
Anyone who is 16 and older must have a license to fish in salt or fresh water, but from there, the different types of fishing license must be considered. Fishing in fresh water, ponds, lakes, creeks, or runs needs a non-tidal sport fishing license costing $20.50. Fishing in salt water requires a Chesapeake Bay and sport fishing license that costs $15. Not everyone needs a license, however. If you or your family own a waterfront property, then all that needs to be done is to register with the Maryland Saltwater Angler Registry before fishing. Just registering is also permitted for those who already have a Chesapeake Bay Coastal Sport and Boat License decal. The Chopticon Braves have won a close match in the girls lacrosse recently after having a slow start. The first half of the game started with their opponents, the North Point Knights, having an 8-1 lead over the Braves. Jordan Ball said, we've been struggling a lot on defense. Things picked up after a five-minute scoreless streak as Rebecca Knight got the Braves' first goal of the night. Down seven goals, the Knights got their second goal of the game and added three more on a six goal run with tallies also coming from junior attacker Caitlin Parada and Abby Barnett. When it hit the second half, each team quickly made a goal leading to a score of 12 to 10 in North Point's favor. Goals from each side kept running the score up, but finally Rebecca Knight sealed Chopticon's victory, ending on a score of 18 to 16 for the Braves' favor. North Point's head coach Jimmy Ball said, you have got to give it to Chopticon. They came back 8-1. to one. That's what you call a veteran group. This news brief has been provided by The Enterprise. For more details, visit somdnews.com. That's all we have for you today on this edition of St. Mary's Now. I'm Louis Bose. And I'm Eric Van Brunt. Signing, Signing off. off.